Or my all-time favourite, when the client says to you, mm, we'll have a bit of a think about it. You know, here's the thing, if the client's saying, we'll have a bit of a think about it, or anything like that, okay, here's the hot tip of the day, they're not going to come back to you, okay, it's, it's a polite way of them letting you down, because either you haven't clicked with the client, or what you're talking about is just going to be far too expensive for the client, or whatever it may be, and this is what you normally encounter after you've spent hours pricing the project. You've perhaps drawn a plan for the client, then you've spent hours pricing the project for the client to say, oh, well, we'll have a bit of a think about it. Yeah, incredibly frustrating. Um, at times it was famine or feast. Sometimes we had so much work we didn't know what to do next. Um, other times, of course, it could be so incredibly um, quiet that you don't know what to do next in the other sense. You don't know what you're going to do because you've got nothing to go and do because you haven't secured the jobs that you thought you were going to secure or that I thought I was going to secure. So I was well and truly in what I now call the self-employed rat race. And this is where you chase the work and then you do the work. Now in order to do the work, first of all you've got to chase the work. And then once you've chased the work and got the work, then you've then got to do the work. And it can feel like you're on this never-ending treadmill of chasing and doing, chasing and doing. Because in order to do, you know you've got to chase. And then when you've almost done, you know you've got to go and chase again. Otherwise, when you finish doing, there's going to be nothing left or nothing more to go and do. So it's a cycle going round and round and round and round. And it can literally feel like you're on one of these treadmill thingies right here. And I know because I've been there myself, I know firsthand how that feels. Right, my sales conversion rate was around the 25 to 35%, and it depends on when you measured it exactly. But it was quite low, and if you've never measured your conversion rate, see some of you are probably thinking, well, it's a really low conversion rate, Steve. And yeah, it was. It was a really low conversion rate. But if you've never measured your conversion rate, you should probably go and do that. It's really just a matter of recording all of the, the phone calls, all of the inquiries that come in, versus how many you go and see, and then how many you convert into an actual client, whether it's plan only, whether it's plan and or um, job to construct, or just a job to construct, but there's several ways you can measure that, of course. But it's worth measuring because the results might just stagger you. The first time I was invited to measure my um, conversion rate, I remember the guy saying to me, what's your conversion rate? And I remember saying something along the lines of it being 70 or 80%. And he had a bit of a chuckle and he says, if your conversion rate 70 or 80 percent, Steve, he said, you're doing pretty well. Um, I, I pretty much guarantee it's nowhere near that. And of course, you can imagine what I thought. You know, I thought I knew better um, and I was convinced it was higher than that. But anyway, I went and checked it and went and measured it and, well, there's the result there. By the way, if you'd like to see how I improved my conversion rate to be up into the 90s and at times uh, even, even 100 percent, take a look at the other videos that I've got on YouTube and you'll see at the end of this presentation as to how you can click onto my username to view my other videos. You see if these bricks represent all the landscape businesses in the town that I operate in you know, and, and if I have the award from the Leslie Flower Show and the other various awards and bits and pieces see apart from that there's nothing really particularly different about my landscape business compared to all the other landscape businesses. In fact, quite a few other landscapers also had awards, even from the Ellsley Flower Show. So, really there wasn't too much distinguishing my business, or my landscape business, from other landscape businesses here in town. So, well, what did I do about it? Well, coming up on the Landscape Business Blueprint channel, uh, as I say, I've got a series of short videos explaining what I did about changing things so that I wasn't just another brick in the wall. So that I wasn't getting my time wasted by, by people who just wanted free ideas or... Or had my time wasted by people that had a wish list an absolute mile long but, but could nowhere near afford it. This kind of thing. So that if I was going to see a client, I pretty much knew that the client was going to buy something from us. So check out my other videos to see what I did to change these things. Right, if you want to check out my other videos, you'll see on the page, there's my username there. If you click that, it'll take you to all my other videos.
I meant to mention before, and if you're wondering why I've put together a series of videos and put them on YouTube to help other landscapers, it's because, well, I guess the easiest way to describe this or to explain this is it's become the next big part of my business. And what happened was one day over a lunch meeting with another business colleague of mine, who owns his own business as well, he said to me one day, he said, Steve, I've been watching the way you do things for a number of years now, and it's really cool the way you've worked out and got these um, systems to help you market and run your landscape business. And he says to me, have you ever thought about sharing this information with other landscape business owners? And my initial reaction, you can probably imagine, there's no flipping way I'm ever going to share this information with other landscapers. And you probably thought to yourself already, you know, if this is so good, why is why is Steve sharing it? Well, it's because this has become my business now. Helping other landscapers with marketing for their landscape business. So anyway, I went away and I thought about it. And I thought, you know what? Because after thinking initially that nobody would want to listen to what I have to say and all these kinds of things, all this you know, serious self-doubt, etc., etc. I went away and I thought, you know, maybe some people would want to listen. Maybe some people might be or could be interested in finding out some other ways or some new ways or different ways of marketing their landscape business. Maybe it is worth a crack. So anyway, I launched it into the marketplace and it turns out that people are very interested in hearing what I've got to say. So if you're interested in looking, click on my YouTube username and you can have a look at the other videos and perhaps get a few tips on marketing for your landscape business.